Hi everybody, uh, little Scotty Moss here again, talking to you about coarctation of the aorta. This is pediatric echo for the adult technologist, and I thought I'd go over coarctation today. Um, it's a very important part of congenital heart disease. It is one that is missed frequently, unfortunately, um, usually by techs who um, don't spend enough time trying to visualize the arch. Um, when you go from uh, adult to pediatric echo, the uh, difference between, I don't know other, yeah, how to put it other than, you know, the difference between the men and the boys, as they used to say back in the early 1800s, um, is your ability to image the aortic arch properly. Um, without that talent, you are going to have trouble finding a coarctation. Um, you may be able to find the flow for it, but you won't be able to really show where it is, and that's important for a surgeon going in to repair it. So let's move on. So here we have the anatomy of the aortic arch, and uh, if you look at it, obviously you won't see all these vessels on an arch view because the lungs get in the way. And uh, it's more important really just to look at the arch itself and the vessels coming off the arch. Those vessels are the brachiocephalic vessel, which is right here. The left common carotid artery, which is right here. And the left subclavian artery, which is right there. So... If you were to look at those three vessels and get those in the picture, then you've pretty much gotten as much as you can. Um, you also obviously want to get as much as the uh, much as the uh, sorry folks as much of the ascending aorta as you can. Um, you sometimes have some dropout here, and then getting the descending aorta is vital. Um, it's uh, important because a good portion of the coarctations which I'll show you, will occur right about here. It's called post-ismus, which is also post-PDA um, or ligamentous or arteriosis, um, ligamentum arteriosis. Sorry, folks. Um, so those are where most of the coarctations occur. And you need to image that area especially the best. And you'll always want to put your continuous wave Doppler right through this area in several shots. So um, continuous wave uh, will always take, if you remember your echo training, it always takes the highest velocity and puts it on the screen. So the little line that you see on a continuous wave uh, Doppler, you know, you see it right here on the bottom. That doesn't mean anything. That's just for doctors who don't understand continuous wave Doppler. Um, you could actually just put a straight line, and it's going to take the highest velocity, whether it be here, 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 or here, and put it on the screen for you. So, a little extra for you there. Um, but anyways, these are the vessels, the, the important ones, like I said, brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid and the left subclavian. Um, I would say 90% or higher of the aortic uh, coarctations are past the left subclavian artery. Now if I were to draw the coarctation itself, you would see the ascending and the vessels, common carotid, subclavian artery, innominate artery, and then you would see a narrowing here, and then usually a narrowing there. And that's what a coarctation of the aorta looks like. It can be up higher, it can be down lower. Um, most of the time it's right around this area. Um, there are occasions when they occur up higher, but it's pretty rare. Um, so... Uh, these are kind of a quick drawing of where you'll see them. I got pictures too, so here's a better drawing than the one I just did. So here you have 
nice normal aortic arch and obviously right here you see the coarctation um, these are the coronary arteries they've been cut off in this image but that's the origins of them so you can see a coarctation obviously the flow through there would be significant so you'll get a real high pressure here in the aorta and a lower pressure here um, children with uh, in fact I'll show you that picture I won't even talk about it until we get to it so this is a better visual of it this is just a straight-on view of the heart um, basically and uh, if you were staring into the chest this is almost what it looks like um, and here you can see where the coarctation would be right here and uh, obviously the descending aorta goes down the back of the heart behind the heart so a lot of times it's very hard to visualize the descending aorta um, you know to any distance in an adult because there's just so much tissue there and also the distance and also the lungs and everything like that. Now in children, usually we can see the descending down quite a bit. I mean, if you just angle the transducer a little bit and all these views, the coarctation views, the aortic arch views are obviously shot from the suprasternal notch view. So if you're not familiar with that view, um, go back and look at some of the anatomy and also some of your echo views. Um, maybe in the congenital heart section of the book it should show you a good view of the arch um, using an echo picture so these are the two main types of coarctations this is how they're um, classified so you have a postductal sorry folks I always forget to turn the pen on so you have a postductal right there so you can see here's the ductus and the coarctation is beyond that hence the word post, and preductal, which is the coarctation is before the ductus, which is right here. So those are usually how they're classified. Um, there are other classifications too. You can get deeper into it, but most of the time that's the question you'll be asked. Is it preductal or postductal? Um, so it's a good thing to know. Okay, this is showing a repair of the arch. This is probably the most common form of a repair. So this is the um, where they just basically cut off the um, the coarctation and then sew the two ends together so it's an astomosis um, repair and it's probably the most common one that's done. That's if you have enough tissue. If the coarctation is a long coarctation then they have to do something else. Alright folks, so I'm going to do this in three sections here. So here's the coarctation repair that I just showed you, the end to end anastomosis that is most commonly used for coarctation. This is one where the, uh, the coarctation is usually down a little bit lower and maybe there's not enough uh, tissue to sew it together. So what they end up doing is tying off the subclavian artery and basically other vessels pick up that blood flow. I always found that amazing, but they do. They pick up the blood flow going down the arm and um, they become bigger and they handle the blood flow. But what they do is they open that vessel up there and they produce a patch, which uh, you can see to the right here, um, kind of opens up the aorta and voila, you have an aorta. You don't have a subclavian, but you have an aorta. And the last one is the newest one that we're using now, which is passing a guide wire in through the aorta and using a balloon to open it up. Now, I'll show you a picture a little bit later on. This is kind of an older uh, procedure. They still use it every once in a while, but they would like to make sure that it stays permanent, so I'll show you how they do that. So I showed you the balloon uh, angioplasty that they used uh, a while back for opening up a vessel. Um, it's also used in coronary arteries, but um, you know they use it in coarctation. Now they have stents for the coarctation, so you can see the metal here, and basically it's a little bit of a cage that 
the balloon is inside it, it deploys the cage and opens the vessel up nice and wide so that there's good blood flow going through it. Um, this is how most of the time nowadays that they repair an aorta um, that uh, there's coarctation. It's just a simpler procedure, you don't have to open the child up and all that other fun stuff. So Here's a drawing of a nice little child. And this is one of the ways of figuring out that a child has a coarctation. So if you're doing an echo on the child, some labs will actually have you do the blood pressures first, but uh, most labs will do it where you do an echo on the child. If you do find a coarctation, then you'll take blood pressures. And anything above the coarctation, let's say, you know, you take a blood pressure here in the brachial area, you know, right here, and one here. Those blood pressures, because they are above the uh, coarctation, will be very, very high. So they can be 160 over 100, something like that, which is pretty significant for a kid. And then you go down to the lower extremities, and the blood pressure there will be significantly lower. So it could be, you know, 100 over 50 or something like that because the blood is just not getting down there at a relatively good pressure. So um, this is important to know when you're examining a child. If you suspect a coarctation, you can do the blood pressures in all four extremities and uh, see if there's a big difference. If the upper extremities have a significant um increase then uh, and the lower extre extremities have a lower one then obviously you probably have a coarctation. Now the only time this doesn't take into um, effect is if the coarctation were to be like right here and it was before the left subclavian vessel which is here then the pressure in the left arm would be lower so <coughs> Um, but that just depends upon each child's coarctation. That's a much more rare type of coarctation, so um, most of the time you'll see the difference in the coarctation's uh, pressures, just the way I drew it at first. So, so I wanted to show you this slide just to uh, um, give you an idea. This is a picture of an adult patient who had a coarctation repaired. Sometimes um, during childhood, when a coarctation is repaired, um, later on, the repair narrows again. Um, that's just because of the growth of the child into adulthood, and it has to be repaired again. So, um, you can see what ends up happening on this picture here, how there's a significant dilatation of the ascending aorta. That's because the pressure where that coarctation was is much higher in here. So that'll cause it to dilate. Now this is that same repair that we saw before um, where the subclavian is taken off, tied off, and run down here as a patch. And then also you have uh, like a Dacron patch or even a pericardial patch can be used, I think, um, to repair it. So, okay, this will be our last picture. Yay! I know. Um, I'm a little long-winded. Coarctation in uh, angiogram. So this would be uh, one of the things that they would look at as a final test before doing a surgery or in this case it looks like they could possibly do a, um, a stent placement um, and uh, gives you an idea of how significant that coarctation can be. And it does look like there's some enlargement of the ascending aorta, and you can also see um, in the uh, not only the ascending aorta, but even some in the post postenotic area here, is some, and then here you see some dilatation in both areas. That's not uncommon. We do see that quite a bit. So I hoped you hoped you hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, I'll get another one out as soon as I can. See ya.